somebody, we, if you have a, a step walk, somebody that prayed in their sleep sometime, I, I need somebody that can tell the devil to go on back to a dry place to roll over. I need somebody. Hey, somebody. Come on, somebody. I need somebody to say, it's automatic. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And so, God just wanted me to encourage you and give you some four tips on how you can make it through your mission. Four tips. Here's the first one. Don't try to fool God. Some of us walk around trying to fool ourselves. And it's to your detriment. But don't try. Don't try. Six and seven like we read. Said, so do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Yes, See, mocking is making fun of. You can't make God look stupid. It's impossible. The Bible said you cannot. That means there is no one on earth that has the ability. No one in all the universe has the ability to make the Father look foolish. See, you have to understand that just because people may taunt God and test God does not necessarily mean that God has lost. You understand? It just means he's waiting. I need it. See, that was, that was deep right there. Just means he's waiting. Because if you read the scripture, every time he talks about moving, it's moving at the proper time. See, God is very intricate in his steps. He don't just make steps to make them. He makes them at the proper time. So understand that if God has not moved on your situation yet, he's just waiting on the proper time. You can't, you can't fool God. You can't mock God. Don't even try it. Some of us try to fool God to come out. God, I pray. No, God know what you already thinking about. You know how whack your prayers be sometimes. Oh, y'all need to be with me sometimes. He already know when you get on fake prayers that sound pretty, but you mean nothing of it. When you be praying and thinking about Applebee's in the back of your head. He right there like, mm-hmm, but you're hungry. Come on, somebody. He, he knows. Let, let's stop playing with him. He knows if you you, you praying and, and oh Lord please help me help me and you have the premeditated sin plotting in the back of your head. Why are you asking the Lord to help? Me? Oh you know what I'm talking, about, ladies. When you get mad and you say Lord help me, you take the mirror off. Help me from not snatching their weave off. God, you already getting ready to fight. That ain't no real prayer. Come on. God knows and He sees all. And he wants you to know that he see all good, bad, or different. Whatever you plant, you're going to harvest 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Come on, somebody. You cannot fool God. And you can't fool God with the Bible either. I've heard people try to do that. I know that sounds funny, but there's some people out there who read the Bible and try to excuse their wicked behavior by perverting the meaning of Scripture. They'll say, well, since some great men of God had concubines, I can adulterize and have as many lovers as I choose. Solomon did that, and his whole kingdom failed. Right, right. David did that, and he had to hand it over to Solomon. Oh, y'all need to be with me. And a warning, when he had a child, it died. Right, right, right. You can't fool God. Right, right. There's some people that try to use scripture in order to feed their spirit of revenge, and that is called bibliomancy. That's witchcraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You cannot fool God. God. And if you want to make it in this life, you want to make it in this destiny, you want to make it in this mission, then you need to understand, keep it real with God, keep it 100. Even if you don't feel like doing X, Y, and Z, at least tell them about it. Right. <laughs> Let's keep it real. Yeah, I used to tell God, look, God, I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like doing that. I don't feel like prophesying. I don't feel like going to church. You want to do something like that. Well, you the pastor. Well, I don't feel like it. I ain't going to sit here and be like, God, I need you to move. No, and I'm here rolling over my bed. My like, God, I need you to move right now. You know, I need you to move. <laughs> Be honest with God, and He will be honest with you. Amen. <laughs> Number two, second tip on how you can make it through your mission. Number two is root yourself to please the Holy Spirit 
and not your flesh. Amen. Amen. Root yourself Amen. to please the Holy Spirit yes, and not your flesh. Yes, so Galatians 6 and 8, we're just in Galatians, our text. It says, whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. And whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. All right, so sowing to please the flesh means that you are rooting yourself in a position that will feed your flesh, which will in turn please it, meaning to give it satisfaction. See, the more that a person postures themselves in sin, the more the flesh gets used to the pleasure of the sin. And it'll begin to hunger and crave and instead of you being the master over your flesh, you will be the slave to your flesh. Because you dictate to the clay. Come on, somebody. This is how we can lose weight by exercising and make that weight. Come on. We have to create the snap back. Come on, somebody. But when we don't, we get big, right? Because we come enslaved to our bellies. Come on, somebody. Yeah, you true. have to decide who has the power. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You cannot allow yourself to have your flesh, the enemy, to have the power. Yeah. What success yeah. would that bring you? Yeah. See, spiritual warfare is about two things. Territory. And authority. Yeah. Authority is power. Okay? If you have power, then you'll have territory. If you have territory, you'll have power. You understand what I'm saying? It's all about that legal right. So if you relinquish either one of those things, you lose your vote. You have no control. If you relinquish power, you become the slave, not the master. If you relinquish territory, you become the slave and not the master. This is the whole point of spiritual warfare. I don't care what it is that's going on in your family. It's because the enemy wants to gain authority and say so in your home. I don't care what's going on in your, fa in your finances. It's because the enemy wants to gain say so of what's going on with your money. I don't care what's going on in your job because the enemy wants say so of what's going on in that company. This is why when we begin to pray spiritual warfare prayers, we are coming into battle because we are snatching the authority from the devil. Don't think that when you begin to say, Lord, I take back my family, I take back my finances, I take back my block, I take back this, that you're not picking a fight. But if you don't, they go going to snatch it. The thing is, you got to be strong so that the fight ain't fair. Did I say that? I'm going to use you. I'm going to utilize the power of God. <laughs> All right. I want you to be a weaker source. Pretend because she's strong and mighty. Okay? So, you know how to do the windmill for me. Don't hit me. Do the windmill. Like this. Like you about to fight. Don't act like you don't know how to do that. You little girl. Like that. Right? You want to do this so that the hips don't swing. Y'all yeah. see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do whatever I want to. And I'm paying attention. Why? Because she's a weak adversary. Oh, y'all, y'all act like y'all know what I'm talking about. But if she got some no me and she starts swinging for real, I got to take my attention off something else. Do you understand? And I got to dodge and move because she's fighting for real. But if I keep my prayer, this is where worship comes in. When I seek God and he said for us to focus on him, and all these things will be added unto us. I start to give the power of the Holy Spirit that greater is he that works than me gets stronger. You understand? So that way when it's time to fight, I don't have to do this. I can just do this. So anyway, girl. Oh, 
You still there? Anyway. Oh, y'all, come on, somebody. If y'all really knew what I was really doing right now, don't get stuck on the way she was fighting, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. You have to be focused on how. It's about getting stronger. Y'all know Rocky Balboa. Come on, about five Rockies. Don't act like you ain't watched not one. Right, right, right. If you right. have not watched one, then there's a situation. <laughs> Rocky always stole away for the fight. He got in his word. Come on. Let's come on. Come on with it. He was on fighters do. He's boxing. But look, this in the spirit. Intercessors get on our word. We go in our prayer closet. Rocky was in the meat locker. Come on, but come on. We were in the prayer closet. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we were taking those scriptures and applying them. And we were making the Holy Spirit stronger in here by confessing them over our lives. Come on, somebody. And then we begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Then we start taking the scriptures and start working them. Yeah. And when we pray, some people say, I did that scripture and it didn't work. You're talking about uh, be nice to my uh, uh, enemies and it's like hot coal on their head and it didn't work. They just laughed at me. Baby, that's because it's the first time you used that one. Yeah. <laughs> that's your first time. You're not going to learn how to ride a bike immediately. Put them on. Yeah. When they put on those little fake little baby wheels on, put them training wheels on, baby. Yeah. That's the first time you work that scripture. Yeah. Work it about 25 more times. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And then it's going to really get, then you mess around, you know when it work. Because you be a blessing to somebody. Let me hear that. I feel demonstrative, y'all. And you, you really want to bless somebody say, you know, I was thinking of you. God bless you. And you get them something, they act like they don't want to take it. Now, come on, somebody. You know you really worked that scripture when they think you did something to it. And all it is got love all over it. Work the scripture. That way. But see, the, see, the warfare is about small, minor battles. The enemy uses the battles to tire you out. So when the war comes, you weak. Yeah. Especially if you are strong, say. Uh -huh. yeah. So you be like, everywhere I turn, I'm fighting and fighting. Some battles don't even fight. I just walk beside them. <laughs> oh, y'all y'all, y'all missed that. I see a little battle. Well, I'm going over here. Because the Bible said, I will fight your battles. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah! Yeah. I said, oh, angels, you got that. This is, a, this is a, a, a diversion. This is not really for me. This is to make me tired and weak. So I see it. I put my prayer on the altar. And I keep working. Battles can't destroy your family. They only tire you out. Battles can't make you broke. Come on, they only make you worried. Oh, come on. Eh, eh, eh. Come on. But that battles are small. They're not real. They're mirages. Keep it real. The war is after territory. The battle cannot take territory. That's a street fight. Come on, somebody. The war is territory and power. You don't get no power from no battle. That ain't nothing. That's all like this. This is my block. That's it. He ain't got time for that. I'm after regions. Come on, somebody. Come on. Some of y'all sitting there here weary. A little battles. Okay, you got sucker punch. Cool. Lick your wounds. Evaluate wh where you went wrong in the in the battle fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Evaluate how you got hit. Oh, this is strategy because you go in prayer with those miscellaneous prayers. You know the ones where you just kind of think, well, I'm going to pray about this and I'm going to pray about that and just hope that it all work out. Nope. Mm -mm. Yeah. You write down, but this is how the animal hit me. Well, the animal, yeah, the animal demon, yeah. <laughs> hit me here, hit me here, hit me here, hit me here. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is what I did. Nothing. Okay, well, let's rework that out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't block. Matter of fact, I succumbed to it. I got mad. I cussed at it. Oh, wait a minute. Come yeah. on. Come on. Let's get it real. Hung yeah. up on it and... Yeah. I acted out, I ain't did stuff like that in about 15 years. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't cussed in three months. I can't believe the devil got me. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about because nobody cussing here. Mm. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it real. Yeah, come on. The enemy catch you slipping. Right. Because you weren't prepared yeah. to ignore the battle. Come on. I look at battles and say, oh, that's what you're doing? All right. Look, look, I had a little battle. This morning I said, oh, I'll catch that when I get home. Yeah. 
Angels on deck, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I ain't worried nothing about that battle. I said, oh. When the battle starts and you ain't do nothing but sit back on the side, that means whatever you're doing for the Lord is creating waves for the enemy. Yeah. You understand? Enemy in the earth, enemy in the spirit. Y'all with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me get back to what's on my paper. Praise <laughs> We have to be careful not to sow, sow to flesh. Pleasing the flesh will cause destruction. See, I'm not talking about how we, you know, the seasoned saints trying to do right by the Lord and slip up a couple times and repent and get back on the bandwagon. I ain't talking about y'all because we all fall short of the glory. I'm talking for people who posture themselves purposely in sin. <laughs> And this is what they want to do. They ain't ready for church. They ain't ready for the Lord. And they posture themselves. I can respect a sinner that knows they are a sinner. Wait, I can respect that. I can respect a liar that tells me they lie. I can respect a thief that tells me they're a thief. Because we're not playing games here. Because most people want to pretend like they're saved. And they're not. And then you have to spend all this time discerning and going through poor experiences with these people and you really find out what who they really are is wolf and sheep clothing. Yeah, That's yeah. too time consuming. Just come out with it so I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, yes, I'm an adulterer. Okay, well, what you want to do? You want to get free? No. All right, well, peace. <laughs> really? Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. Be real. And be able to discern that spirit. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about so to the Holy Spirit. So and to please the Holy Spirit, that means you are rooting yourself in the Holy Scriptures and you are living a life that is pleasing to the Father, then you are reaping eternal life and an abundant life here on earth. God wants us to sow to this to please the Holy Spirit, sow to spirit, to subdue the flesh rather than to please it. And I already talked about it. Scripture, obedience, prayer. Walking in your mission. Completing your mission. Not having tantrums in the middle of the mission. <laughs> Grown folks have tantrums. Yeah. You know what they look like? I don't want to do this, God. <laughs> You're going to do it anyway. <laughs> That's tantrums. That waste God's time and it wastes the mission. You know how we do it. I don't want to be a soldier, Lord. You have no choice. <laughs> This existence is to fight. And if you don't want to fight, then just stay asleep. Wow. You remember that thing in the Matrix? I don't know if it was Matrix 2, 3, I don't know which one it was. But Neo, he went and he saw all these pods. And these were all these people asleep. And they were having their life and, you know, some had good life, some had whatever. But he was looking at the real deal. The real deal didn't look all that great. But all these people were asleep. And he said, here's the, here's the question. Do you wake up? Because the reality ain't all that great. <laughs> but the Bible even talks about people can't see. Because they're literally blinded. And they can't see the gospel. Did you know there was people in the church, ministers too, that's still blinded by the gospel? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yeah. Still blinded. I, you know, I, you know, I prophesy I guess, I demons and all that stuff. So, periodically I get people who, who ask me or say, well, I thought you was a witch, you know. You know, because I don't know how you know all that stuff about me. I thought you was a witch because, you know, you cast out demons. But then the scriptures say, how can, how can you beat bees above and cast out bees above? It's impossible, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, that, that's the scripture, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we read that, right? Yeah. But they sleep. So it doesn't translate that I'm on God's team. You understand? Because what is really being said is I don't know God to be that powerful. Because I believe that Satan has more power than God. Because if you can raise the dead, if you can cast out demons, 
if you can prophesy my life, if there's demonstration, then the powers that you operate are greater than God. That's what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because they have not seen God really move. But we have to give all glory and all power to the almighty Jehovah God. Jesus alone. Here's the third tip. Preserve your strength and you will reap your harvest. Preserve your strength and you will reap your harvest. Wait a minute. You ain't going to reap it if you're tired? That's the situation. Preserve your strength and you will reap your harvest. So Galatians 6 and 9 says, let us not become weary in good doing. We can't be tired. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Yes. All right, so this is a strategy tactic. Remember, the Bible is nothing but laws, yeah. love, yeah. and a whole lot of mysteries, right? Yeah. So let me decode this scripture for you. Let us not become weary in well-doing, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So... Decoded means if you're weary, you can't reap the harvest. Because if you're weary, you'll give up, then you can't reap. Amen. Wait, 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 wait. Right. I've decoded it. Right. If you're weary, yep. you will give up right. and you won't reap. All right. So if the devil can't get you off your square, he'll make you tired. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I need some folks that know what I'm talking about. I wrote that down. Come on. He'll make you tired. All right. So let me tell you. That was a biblical code. Y'all. Y'all got that, right? Watch about the spirit of frustration. Oh, I know it well. The spirit of frustration does this. It watches you. You know why? Because the scripture says that the enemy goes to and fro in and out of the earth seeking to whom he can devour. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So he watches you. They might say, I had a great day. The enemy was like, everything went my way, whatever. You know why? It wasn't because the enemy said, I'm going to leave them alone. No, no, no. That's not how war works. Right. Do not believe just because you had a good day that the enemy said, I'm going to leave them alone. Oh, no, baby. Right. The enemy's doing this. <laughs> I'm going to watch you for today. Yeah. Somebody, yes, Lord. come on, somebody. I'm trying to yeah, help y'all yeah, yeah, so y'all can stop cussing out people. Yeah. Stop giving up on family members. So stop. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. All right. Watch this. He's not going to watch you. So the Lord is with you. Mm -hmm. But something is going on with you. Oh, there's an insecurity. Write that down. Oh, there's a weakness. Write that down. Now, all these things, oh, they love serving the Lord. Every time the phone rings, they're going to help Sister So-and-so. Every time the phone rings, you're going to help Brother So-and-so. Oh, all right. Are oh, you about to shut in about four times this week? You was real tired on that road the other day. Oh, you like to pray, don't you? All right. Takes it back to the platoon. Come on, somebody. It, let me talk. Let, let, let me talk Bible talk. Take it back to the legions. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I said, hey, I was looking at so-and-so, and they like to pray a lot. And they stay up to about 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning praying for everybody. They take lists and everything. Okay? And, and, and their prayers are annihilating us. So I'll tell you what. Let's create all these little minor battles. And they'll be praying so much for them. So that when we do the real thing to just break that whole marriage apart and break the whole family apart and they'll lose their job in their new house and car, they'll be so tired because they done prayed and prayed and prayed for everybody else to get through their little battles. And when the war hit the house, we got them. Ready? Let's go. So it's because you have a good day. Don't mean the devil say, I ain't messing with them because I don't want to be bothered. No, it just means I'm going to fall. The enemy, nowhere does the Bible say the enemy chills out. It said he goes to and fro seeking whom? So he watches for weakness. 
when you're having those meltdown conversations and you call your homeboy, your homegirl, your best friend, your auntie, your cousin, whomever, your counselor, your therapist, you break down, cover yourself and break. Because the enemy's listening. You afraid of Ray Ray knowing. Ray Ray ain't nothing compared to the devil that's been watching you since birth. But you scared of Ray Ray. Don't tell Ray Ray, you know him. You know what I mean? The whole family don't know. <laughs> and Ray Ray's thing is talking about, <laughs> you got a big warlock in your spirit right now. <laughs> I've been watching you since your mom and daddy put you in the middle of the belly. You worried about Ray Ray. That's hilarious. Wow. Cover your step. Before I have deep conversations, I learned, I said, Lord, fill this conversation in Jesus' name. Yeah. I started doing that with my prayers. Lord, fill this time with you. Wow. I know it even more now. Because those of you that don't fight with external demons, fight with them in your mind. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And the demon does know your thoughts. Because yeah. if it rests here, yeah. right. it knows what you're thinking. Yeah. You know, yeah. I fell into the false doctrine that the demon can't read your thoughts. Yeah. He can read them. If he's inside your head. Yeah. Uh-huh. You heard something called intrusive thoughts? Yeah. Gotta write this down. Somebody, y'all some, y'all that came up to me tell me I'm gonna be slayers. So let me help you. Something called intrusive thoughts. You know how you know? It's them crazy thoughts you be having on random. Talk about slap them beside their head, like what? Mind you, devil. Because he's in here. Yes, Lord. How can you hear him if he ain't in here? Come on, somebody! He hiding somewhere. You gotta find out where he at. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like little Mac is just hiding somewhere. Yeah. Oh, well, let me help you. Let me help you. How did he get in? Yeah. Hurt, you wouldn't let go. Yeah. Memory, you wouldn't let go. He said, I'm gonna nestle behind that pain. Wow. That memory that was on repeat. Wow. I'm gonna nestle right there. And I'm gonna listen to every thought right there. Yeah. I had a dream one time. The enemy was in my dream. But in my dream, I was having these thoughts of desires that I wanted to accomplish in my life. Some goals, and these goals was going through in my dream. Some things I really wanted. And you know, and I said, why is the devil sitting here watching me think about my goals in my dreams? It's because he was nestled right there. I had to clean out my mind. Yeah. The Bible talks about renewing the mind. Yeah. We take it on a very surface yeah. level. Yeah. I want to think about scripture instead of thinking about bad stuff. Yeah. I want to listen to gospel instead of listening to rap music or something. And we yeah. really real basic with it. Yeah. Do you understand? But that's only your conscious mind. Yeah. But your subconscious just as filthy as it used to be pulling out archives of pornography wow. and sexual exploits that you've been had since 98. Wow. And you be thinking about that all... No, I'm going to leave that alone. I done stepped on something. Come on, boy, when I used to smoke weed... <laughs> Woo, I don't smoke no more, but baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes, Lord. Talking about some boy if I wasn't saved. <laughs> because it's hiding. Yeah. It's pulling out information. Yeah. It hides in the sub the unconscious. That's why your dreams you're talking about. I ain't dreamt about this since I was 10 years old. Lord, why I dream that? Look, I didn't have nothing to do with that. Let it go. It's because you're holding on to things. Yeah. Come on, something. Right. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. Wow. Cleanse your mind. Yeah. Start going through. Every time you have a crazy dream about something, write it down. And say, instead of saying, maybe the Lord wants to tell me something, maybe you say, Lord, check me out. Yeah. 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 What do I need to resolve? Because the enemy can wrestle and nest in all those areas. And you wonder why every time God gives you a strategy, it fails. And you didn't tell nobody, but it's resting. The enemy heard the whole conversation. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. You have to renew your mind. This is why when you get that scripture in there, you start meditating on these laws day and night. The enemy can't set where there's light. That's so when you begin to think and meditate, when you think, your conscious mind begins filled because you can't think of sitting and think of scripture at the same time. Your mind can only think at one thought at a time. So when you start saying, seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. At that moment, not a simple thought can run through your mind. 
and the Lord begins to work. And every area is where there's doubt and fear has to move out and vacate. And then it begins to leave your conscious mind. Then all of a sudden you start seeing fruit and it moves to the subconscious mind. So every area that you saw that there was failure, you begin to renounce some things off your life. And then you go into the unconscious mind and stuff that you thought was dead and buried was resting right there. But you said God said he'll forget about the former things. I need somebody to be with me. And then you got to go into that scripture and say, but the Lord said it's in the lake of forgetfulness. Yeah. Therefore, if the Lord don't remember it, neither do I. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We can't allow the enemy to drain us. Yeah. Preserve your strength. So you will reap every prayer you pray for yourself, your spouse, your family, your career, your church, your community, your friends will all manifest because you learn to trust God and stop doing it all yourself. Let's move on. Number four. The fourth and last tip is keep doing good works. Keep doing good works. Galatians 6 and 10 says this. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Now let me help you properly exegete this text. That does not mean give your whole pearls towards swine. It said do good. So I ain't gotta give my real stuff to the swine not doing. But I gotta do good. I gotta treat the pig well, but I ain't gotta give it anything. Huh? I ain't gotta mistreat you, but I ain't gotta favor you either. Come on. Huh? Come on. Some Roll out the red carpet for people who hate you. Who got time for that? They want to appreciate it. They be like, mm -hmm. nah, you ain't got time for that. But you can give them respect. That's right. And they keep it moving. Amen. Huh? We allow bad relationships, bad choices, bad people, bad investments, bad character, affect us from doing good. Have you noticed a pattern here? Yeah. Write the patterns down. Mm -hmm. You do good. If you're easily discouraged, you do understand this is where the enemy is going to fight you, right? Mm -hmm. Every time I try to help people, something happens. I ain't going to help people no more. Well, that was the point. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I try to love people, it they always hurt me. I ain't going to love nobody no more. Well, that was the point. <laughs> you got to re-rump your strategy. What are you doing? And how much love are you provide? Come on, I'm supposed to love you, but I ain't but the Bible did not give a percentage of how much love I was supposed to give one person. Wait, come, come, come on. Huh, huh, come on. I didn't read it. Show me that text. Huh? I don't have to love you like I love my spouse. Come on. And I don't have to love you like I love my God, but I do have to love you. Wait, wait, wait. Let me leave that alone. Because some people are here looking at me like, no, Pastor. So, no. Show me text. This is why you walking around broken hearted talking about, I gave him everything. You the fool. Should have gave him a quarter and kept moving. Do good. But it didn't say what measure. Some reach 30, some reach 60, and some reach 104. 30 folk is good sometimes. Come on. Don't, don't mess with me, y'all. Because I, I read this text every time. You, let me see. The more technical you read the scripture and decode it, you will realize how many times the enemy done came up and done messed you over. He read.
treats it very technically. Yeah. This is how he gets legal right to come in into your life under the craziest circumstances. Yeah. Do you know the enemy can come in through trauma? Yeah. I, I fell last year around this time. Yeah. I fell. And I had a pain in my ankle real bad yesterday. Yeah. Real, real bad. And I was buying it and cash and he wasn't going nowhere. But I remember what the Lord told me that it could come through trauma. Yeah. Just because I fell. The enemy said, oh, there's an opening for me. And it tried to bring a spirit of arthritis. So I said, spirit of pain that's come through trauma, I rebuke you. Come on. You crumble and die and go to the lake of fire. Come on. Come on. And it left immediately and I'm a dancer. <laughs> know the law. And use it. That's what it's for. Furthermore, just learn to guard your heart better. Forgive everyone. It is not worth them demons hiding in your subconscious. Just because you want to hold on. Well, I want to be mad at them for a while because it makes you feel. No, nah, fool. The demons hiding in there talking about, yeah, hold on to it. Get rid of them demons. You can have a clean and clear mind. It is possible. And you pray over your mind daily. Because you pick up hitchhikers along the way. I have to constantly turn the channel. This commercial is demonic. I bind it. Come on. Clear your mind and go to bed. You have the best sleep of your life. You won't think about work. You won't think about family. To my, I, people in family. I was tossing the turn all night thinking about re I was like, I said, fine. How are you doing? That is so insincere. You're wrong, though. You was wrong for being asleep. I feel good. <laughs> Jesus was in the boat. The boat was tossing and turning. And, and the big storm was there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The disciples was like, how can he sleep in this storm, man? We about to die. Wake up! <laughs> That's how we talk to the Lord. Lord, do you see me? <laughs> he woke up like, what's happening? Oh, this? Okay. Calm down. Whatever. And then he decided to walk on water. Let me show you how easy this is. <laughs> Come on. One person was like, oh. They was like, oh, no. They like, forget. <laughs> but he was chilling about it. It's all about how you respond. Wow. I, I really, I said, Lord, help me cover this guy. Help me with my response. Yes. 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 Wow. The Always. enemy always looking for your response. Wow. 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 Yes. Let's go back old school. How your mama and grandma and aunties used to tell them, baby never let them see you sweat. Right, right. <laughs> right. right. Even when you're by yourself, don't you let that devil see Hallelujah. you sweat. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, we believe right now that these are tools that set the whole house free. For every person in this church, in this building, represents a nation. And we declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every bloodline gets free. In the mighty name of Jesus. That no longer will we sweat the small stuff. And that we will be preserved to reap. And when the war comes, we'll win. And we thank you, God. And we worship your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, I receive it, I, receive it. I, believe, it. I believe it, and I'm walking in it. Walking in it. Amen. Amen. Come on, give a hand clap for the Lord. Did that bless you today? Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. I heard a preacher say, well, if you can preach, you're preaching real good, they're going through hell, but I feel fine. Let me rethink yes. that one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is good. Yes, is. I know nobody do all to call this moment, but we're going to open up for giving. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Yes. Yes. We are in our.
third week of fast. We yes, start Lord. our Hallelujah. third week today for financial breakthrough. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Every Wednesday we are fasting for financial breakthrough. I'm asking you to give us a faith seed. Yes, Lord. We have six more weeks left. Yes, Lord. Some of you said, I gave my faith seed last week. I have nothing to give today. That's all right. When you get a faith seed, break it. I'm giving my faith seed. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. This is the time to give your. Uh, tithes as well. Amen. Just one offer. Face seed of whatever amount. Bless you. Whatever God lies and tells you, that's what it is. I had a preacher on the Facebook page this week and said I was demonically influenced by telling the people to give a faith seed. <laughs> Obviously, the devil's really mad about that. This is not demonically influenced. The Bible is clear. We are in soul disease. Yes, Lord. When you have your seat, just break it up, right man. Everyone have a chance to get praise the Lord. Oh, no problem. Sister Amika's birthday, y'all. She's 25, y'all. I love that 25. Amen. We command in Jesus' name a prosperity anointing. Yes, Lord. We speak in the mighty name of Jesus that she will have not just what she sowed, but you will bless her with a ladder rain. 
We command in Jesus' name that nothing can harm her or touch her. We believe right now that the enemy is just mad because he can't get to her. And we speak in Jesus' name that she is restored even greater. And that you will send people to help her as she builds her ministry. Strong, mighty, skilled, faithful, intercessors in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen.
your body is responding to your emotions. Okay? There was so much hesitation in the release because of the anxiety being up. Okay? So you've got to trust God. All right? Please. So that the body won't have any more hiccups. You are designed for full healing. Do you believe that? So keep the anxiety down. Do you understand? Get that word. Read it. You confess it over your body. You confess it over your life. You understand? It will be okay. I hear God say it's going to be fine. But that worry allows the body to fall out of back. Okay? You listen to me? All right. God bless you. We have brief announcements, right? Did you want to make them? Okay. What were they? Oh, yeah, wait. Next Sunday is Ordination Sunday. There's no 11 a.m., but it's 2 p.m. I want y'all to come, cotton family. This is my You better drive that flex. 2 p.m. We want to show support. Cherie's getting ordained, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Nurse Harry's getting ordained, y'all. Yeah. And then we have Pastor E. Lake, Manessa from Ohio. Y'all, she came a couple of times. She's getting ordained. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure you come. We're going to have eats. Amen. We have a beautiful reception next door. Amen. It's going to be very, very nice. Beautiful. Amen. So please come and fellowship with us. It's going to be awesome. Amen. Amen. And, oh yeah, we got a, a brief, I'll say brief, brief, brief staff meeting after 2 p.m. I mean, it's real brief. Amen. It's, next time it's going to be a long one. Okay. Oh. Yes. Wait, y'all. Sister Beverly has an announcement. Amen. Hello, everybody. Um, next week, I'll have some copies. Um, but on, Jan on June 24th, uh, it's a Saturday, from 1 to 5, I am having a, a rest day. Amen. Rest is defined, cease work or relax, refresh oneself, or recover strength. Okay. I will be having many massages for your hands and feet, refreshments, and more. You deserve to rest. Yeah. Amen. Make sure y'all come. Uh, we'll have another announcement. Hopefully, Sister Beverly will be here next Sunday and give another announcement for us because it's going to be literally the Saturday right after ordination. Oh, yeah. And um, we want you to be able to come and be blessed. This is going to be a wonderful experience. Amen. How I many of y'all need some rest in your life? Amen. 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 So why can't you do it at God's house? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Our hearts and minds clear. Amen. Dear President, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Continue to keep your spirit with us all week long. Bring us back together again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I hope to see most of y'all at 2 p.m. We're dismissed.